はーい。Yeah, I'm still working on the intro. My name is Jane. I'm a photographer in Chicago. And as you've seen in the title today, we're going to talk about minimalist product photography. Did that work? Did the text pop up? I hope so. Yep, that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's go. Provide some context. I've been a wedding and portrait photographer now for seven to eight years. And I think, like a lot of photographers, in recent years, I've began to make a transition to doing other types of work. About two, two and a half years ago, I started doing some interior photography work. Around the same time, I also started doing branding work that encompasses portraits, lifestyle, and product photography. And hopefully you've noticed, maybe in some of the work that I just showed, that a constant theme in a lot of my work at least is simplicity and minimalism. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Minimalism in product photography and just some general product photography tips and how I achieve that minimalism look in the work that I do and hopefully you can learn something along the way. All right, so I'm gonna try to keep this very simple, but the first tip is less is more and simplicity goes a long way. What I really mean by this is, you know, there's a few elements that go into, I think, a good photo, and in particular, Lee, and in particular, a good product photo. Some of the elements that go into a photo will be color, textures, and then the other elements or characters that you're going to use in your photo to help emphasize your actual subject, which in this case would be your product. Some of the things that I look for is keeping colors concise and intentional, not using colors that clash with one another, and then being very intentional with the colors that I'm using that are on brand for the brand that I'm actually photographing for. So you really just wanna make sure that the textures that you're gonna use, the elements, the colors that you're gonna use in your photo, just make a lot of sense for that product and that in a lot of ways you're not using too many things, too many elements to drown out the emphasis of the product itself. All right, tip two is negative space is king. And at least in the work that I do, I use a lot of negative space to my advantage in a lot of ways to point towards my subject or the product. This has applications for all genres of photography, but I really think that within product photography, using negative space is a great tool and composition technique to really have emphasis on your product itself. As a viewer's eye looks at a specific photo and within a split second can see the entire photo, you wanna use that negative space as they're scanning that photo to push their gaze to that product. Actually, this is a great scene and I purposely kind of shot this scene today too and it helps that Mike was shooting here earlier. Me using a lot of white space here, when you're looking at this frame, hopefully what happened was you saw this shot and you saw the entire scene, but inevitably your eyes just keep going to the center. To me, obviously because I'm talking, but in a lot of ways, there's nothing else to look at here. You know, there's nothing else in the frame except me and these couple elements. And inevitably your eye just keeps going back to me. And my third tip is use light as an unseen character. You guys don't see the various lights that I've set up right now. I actually have one light, two light, three light, set up right now, but you don't see any of them. All you guys see is how the light's filling the frame. That's what I mean by an unseen character. You don't necessarily see all my constant lights actually in the frame itself, but you see the way that the light is shaping me. And the way that I've kind of set up the lights 
is to bring emphasis to me. And there's so many lighting techniques that you can use your advantage. You can use one light, two, multiple lights, natural light, side light, top down light, um, fill lights. There's just so many things that you can use with lighting. But my biggest tip with using light as an unseen character for minimalist product photography is just using light and shaping it in a way for your product where it really makes your product shine and you show the parts of the product that you want to show. And I really think that how you decide to use light to shape your product can create a beautiful minimalist product photo because if you use that light to your advantage to really emphasize both your product and even make the scene more interesting, you are able to now use less elements, less distractions in your photos, less props even. And so really all you're gonna keep in the frame is your product. All right, so these last two tips aren't necessarily minimalist product photography tips, but they're just good product photography tips in general. So the first one is to shoot at higher apertures. And I, and I know that a lot of photographers, including myself, we will shoot at lower apertures, shooting wide open so that we can create more separation between our subject and our background. And this is very common to do in portrait photography. Um, and you can use this technique as well in product photography to really separate your product from the background itself. One of the caveats to that is if you don't nail focus, you're, you're gonna have parts of your product be blurry. And especially if you're shooting too wide open and depending on the distance from the camera to the product, if your product, like every product, is 3D and it has depth to it, you may start to lose some sharpness as you go further away from the front of that product to the back of it. And so, I mean, it completely depends. This is really, in my opinion, a preference and a choice of the photographer taking the photo. But if this is a product that you think your client or even you want to get tack sharp, all of it in focus, I really think that shooting at higher apertures will ensure that the entire product is sharp. Shoot at higher apertures when you choose to. All right, so this last tip, this is tip number five. Again, this is, I think, a great, product photography tip in general. And I actually learned this from a YouTuber and filmmaker named Andy Tu. It's the idea of shooting wide, medium, and tight to tell that story or to show off that product. It's to show the various aspects of that product and even showing some of the scene to bring your viewer into that photo. This is just a really good visual storytelling technique to use. But when you think about product photos, for example, let's say, let's say I'm the product, but this is the scene. You wanna shoot a photo that's a little wider to show some of your scene, to give context for the photo, as opposed to me just being super tight and all you really see is my face. But now I'm giving you some more context for what's around me and what it looks like. And then you wanna go a little tighter to show more of that product, have more of the product fill that frame up. And then you wanna go even tighter to now show some of the characteristics and traits of your product. So whether it's like the edge of it or a certain color. So really shooting in that manner of wide, medium, and tight really helps your viewer understand the context of that product. And it tells more of a story as well, rather than just showing one photo, being able to show an array of photos really does help provide context. Shooting wide, medium, and tight, a great way to tell a story visually, but especially in product photography, it's a great way, especially when you think about like Instagram now or even campaigns, they're typically not just one image, they're gonna be a carousel or a batch of images. And so providing different kinds of angles and compositions, both wide, medium, and tight, really does help your viewer understand that product hopefully better. All right, those are my five tips. And actually, I do have a bonus tip. My bonus tip is to use a tripod and a zoom lens. This is something that doesn't really apply to my portrait or wedding photography work, but using a tripod and a zoom lens in product photography is extremely helpful. Using a tripod allows you to get those really solid, steady images without any blur or shake, especially when you're doing handheld stuff, even though cameras are so great, you don't risk really any of that handheld shake from you just holding it yourself. Even using a tripod allows you to do some other techniques like using slow shutters or even creating stop motions. And although I do love prime lenses, I do find that for product photography work, having a zoom lens is so nice because again, when it's sitting on a tripod, rather than me shooting with a fixed focal length and moving that tripod back and forth constantly, I can just kind of stay there, zoom in and out, get that wide medium 
medium and tight, but still keep the tripod in the same place and just use that zoom lens. So obviously that's if you have one available to you. I'm not saying go out and buy a zoom lens, but if you've got these tools available to you, I really think that they're helpful tools for better minimalist product photography, but really just good product photography in general. All right, that's it. I hope this was helpful. I hope that these tips were helpful in giving you a better idea of how I capture minimalism in my product photography, but also maybe how you can incorporate that into your work as well. And as always, I would appreciate it if you like and subscribe. I currently have some other videos that I'm cooking up. I don't know why I'm doing this. I thought cooking, hardened cooking. You guys know what I'm talking about? All right, anyways, I've got some more videos in the works, in the pipeline, coming up, and I really want you to see them. So hit that bell for notifications as well so that you know when I post these upcoming videos. Again, appreciate you guys, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye. Oh,